Last May, I made my first list of the top 10 prospects in hockey, and now it's time for the 2018 edition. For the purpose of this video, I'm defining a prospect as any drafted player who's not yet played a full NHL season. If this is your first time finding my channel and you enjoy this video, make sure to subscribe for more content. Number 10, Jordan Cairo. Cairo is essentially a skilled power forward. The St. Louis prospect has elite level skating and skill ability, but plays a strong, hard-nosed game. Cairo was originally drafted 35th overall in 2016, and since then has developed brilliantly. He has the speed and skill to play in the NHL, and has dominated the OHL this year with 109 points in 56 games. He also showcased himself on the national stage, where he scored 10 points in 7 games and earned to World Junior Gold with Canada. Expect Cairo to compete for a spot on the Blues as soon as next season. Number 9, Dylan Strom. I've had my concerns with Dylan Strom for a while now, as I didn't think he'll succeed in the NHL due to his below average skating ability. However, he's beginning to shift my doubts. I kept him in my top 10 because his offensive explosion in the AHL this year has amazed me, as he scored 50 points in 47 games for the Tucson Roadrunners. He's earned various call-ups here and there, but has not been able to bring that offensive side with him until his most recent call-up. What really has me looking towards the bright side on Strom is the fact that he's working with one of the world's best skating gurus in Don Braid, who is credited with the rise to stardom of John Tavares. If the skating improves under the influence of Braid, then I'm sure the former third overall pick will be able to make the transition to the NHL. Number 8, Martin Nichas. The 12th overall pick from last year's draft, Martin Nichas made the Hurricanes out of a training camp, but after making his NHL debut and getting a taste of the competition, he has returned to his homeland of Czech Republic. Playing against men in the Pro League, Nichas scored 17 points in 24 games and destroyed the World Junior Championships by scoring 11 points in 7 games for the Czechs. There's a belief he'll be ready for NHL competition next season, but it all depends on Carolina's outlook of his development. Number 7, Kale McCarr. Last summer's 4th overall pick, Kel McCarr is an insanely talented do-it-all defenseman. His high IQ, smooth skating, and offensive talent sets him apart from the competition. He played this season for UMass Amherst in the NCAA, where he scored 21 points in 34 games. That total may seem low for the claimed offensive dynamo in the blue line, but for a freshman in college, that's a decent total. He's also one of the best defensemen at the World Juniors and helped lead Canada to gold, which also earned him an invite to the Olympics that he declined. McCarr has announced he will return to school next season, but I wouldn't be surprised if he's in the NHL soon after. Number 6, Karol Kaprizov. At 20 years old, Karol Kaprizov isn't your usual NHL prospect. The Wild drafted him 115th overall in 2015, and for a while, they did not have any contact with him. Over time, Kaprizov distinguished himself as one of the best players outside of the NHL, and of course, Cliff Fletcher and the Wild management decided to start a relationship with him to inevitably bring him over. He scored a near a point per game pace in the KHL over the last two seasons, and even scored the golden goal at this year's Winter Olympics. Kaprizov has a KHL contract through the 2019-2020 season, so until then, expect him to be a constant on this top prospects list. Number 5, Miro Heiskanen. The Dallas Stars lucked into drafting Heiskanen at number 3 last draft and definitely won't be disappointed with him in the future. He played this season in the Finnish Pro League where he handled himself quite well, scoring 23 points in 30 games, impressive for an 18 year old defenseman. He's a very smooth skating 2 way defenseman and is essentially the mold for the modern day NHL blue line. He's expected to come over to North America next season where he most likely will need some seasoning in the AHL. Number 4, Henrik Borgström. The Florida Panthers took Borgström with the 23rd overall pick in 2016. At the time, he was a skinny Finnish kid and the pick looked to be very off the board. But as time has passed, Borgström has developed into one of the top offensive prospects in hockey. You've probably seen his dangles and highlight reel goals across virtually all social media platforms, and he's been lighting up college hockey since coming over to North America. Last year, he had 43 points in route to winning the national championship, and this year he's improved his point total to 50. Throughout the season, numerous scouts labeled him as one of the best players outside of the NHL, and he was even able to make his NHL debut at the conclusion of the college season. Next year, watch him to contend for the Calder and to be one of the more NHL-ready rookies. Number 3, Elias Pettersson. At 6'3", 165 pounds, it's clear Elias Pettersson doesn't have the size to play in the NHL yet, but he definitely has the skill. The Canucks drafted him 5th overall last year, and he's since taken his game to the next level. Last season, Pettersson competed in the 2nd tier Pro League in Sweden, scoring 41 points in 43 games. This season, however, he's on a new level, scoring 56 points in 44 games in Sweden's top Pro League, the SHL. He also scored a point per game with the World Juniors to lead Sweden to silver. As Mitch Marner has proved, you can play in the NHL as a lightweight, and I think we can all expect Pedersen to be in Vancouver next season. Number 2, Ely Tolvanen. Of course, one of the best players in last year's draft fell all the way to the Nashville Predators at number 30. The Predators have been one of the league's best drafting teams, and Tolvanen is clear evidence to that. 
After two years in the USHL to bump his draft stock, Tolvin returned to Finland to play for Jokerit in the KHL this season. Along the way, Tolvin became the highest scoring teenager in KHL history, a top player at the World Juniors, and he even scored above a point per game at the Olympics. Tolvin is NHL ready today and could very easily contribute to Nashville's Cup run if he's called upon. Number 1. Casey Middlestat The nearly unanimous top prospect in hockey is Casey Middlestat. The Sabres drafted him 8th overall last June and at the time knew they had one of the most skilled players in the draft. Since then, his development in Minnesota has been off the charts. He's thrived against older competition, scoring 30 points in 34 games, and it's clear that his skating, passing, and stick skills will smoothly translate to the new NHL game. He also dominated against his own age in the World Juniors, scoring 11 points in 7 games and being named tournament MVP. He made his NHL debut this season, although that is just a glimpse of what will surely be a Calder Trophy contender next year. Comment down below your top 10 and let me know who else could have been added. This video is brought to you by Fusion Hockey Apparel. Fusion Hockey is your go-to brand for creative and original hockey apparel. Fusion perfectly blends your favorite teams and players into some pretty sick designs, ranging from t-shirts to sweatshirts to phone cases, all for an affordable price. Two of my favorite products are the Patrick Laine and John Tavares designs. For those designs and several others, you can receive 5% off by clicking the link in the description, but I recommend you check out their entire line of products as well. You can also follow them on Instagram at FusionHockey underscore for more updates. I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon sponsor, Hockey Prospect Center. He makes great hockey content showcasing the future of the game, and I recommend you check out his channel. If you'd like to personally be able to choose video ideas, recommend something that you'd like to see, or be featured and promoted in every single video that I make, you can do so by donating just $1 to my Patreon for these benefits and more. Go to patreon.com slash reapsfilms, or you can just click the link in my bio if you're interested. If you'd like to slide in my DMs, you can do so by following me on Twitter at reapsfilms. I will immediately follow you back, and you can also participate in polls and get updated on videos over there. If you've made it this far, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.